Hello, everyone, and welcome to our today's session. We're going to introduce you to three new ways to enrich your productivity applications with Microsoft Graph Tools and data. My name is Beth. I'm a software engineer with Microsoft, and today with me is Aicha. Hi, Beth. Glad to be here today. Hey, everyone. My name is Aicha Bush, and I'm a cloud advocate based in Dubai. So, Beth, let's get started. Great. So there are three things that we want to introduce you today. First is using file web components in your applications as part of Microsoft Graph Toolkit. And then Aicha is going to show you how to react to reach notifications and also handle notifications transactionally. We'll have some demos after each of these sections. Let's go ahead and get started and start talking about using file components in your apps. As part of the new Microsoft Graph Toolkit release, we are going to have two new components, MGT file and MGT file list. The file component is used to represent an individual file or folder from OneDrive or SharePoint by displaying information such as file name, an icon indicating the file type, and other properties such as an author, last modified date, and other details provided by the developer. So Beth, you can change these display details with properties, right? Exactly. The developer or application will provide the identifiers for a file, and the component will generate the query to retrieve the file and show its details based on the attributes and properties supplied. And then we have the file list component that displays a list of multiple folders and files that uses the file component. This is all great. Where can I get my file list from? Great question. Developers will be able to specify a drive by its ID or its path, or whether it's a group drive or from a SharePoint site. The file list component can also display files based on insight types, such as trending files around me, or the last used files, or shared files between me and my coworkers. Other than these new components, we're also introducing some new providers. The MSL2 provider will help you build applications utilizing the latest Microsoft Authentication Library. We are revamping our components to uh, accommodate this new provider, starting with an updated version of the login component that will support multi-account sign-in. And I'm going to show you this here in a second in the demo. Wow, so I can have both my personal account and the work account so I, in the same app so I can switch back and forth. Exactly. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Awesome. Let's also uh, quickly talk about the Electron provider that are available today. Electron is a framework for creating native desktop applications with web technologies like JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. It has become a popular development platform for native applications and are seeing increasing adoption on Windows platform. So some of the popular applications on Windows, such as Microsoft Teams, are Electron apps, right, Beth? Absolutely. Microsoft Teams, Visual Studio Code are both Electron apps. And this is why we're introducing an Electron provider to help developers build cross-platform experiences that offer a native look and feel and connects with not only Microsoft Graph services, but also native platform APIs. On top of the new comp con uh, components and authentication providers, we have some awesome news to share with you on our alignment with the Fluent UI team. Microsoft Graph Toolkit team is excited to revamp our next generation of components built with new Fluent UI web components. We are leveraging robust and extensive primitives and patterns from Fluent Web UI components so that we can build graph connected components super fast. This is literally making it possible for developers to theme and style the components the same way as other Fluent UI components. It's awesome. Right, and this has been asked by our developer community repeatedly in the past. Now let's take a look at the demo on how to get started with Microsoft Graph Toolkit and add a multi-account sign-in enabled login button plus connection to your OneDrive files. Awesome, let's do it. So here on my screen, you can see two windows. One is the VS Code where I only have a index.html page. Uh, you can see there's no other really no, no other uh, files in this folder. And I am introducing the Microsoft Graph Toolkit package by including the script right here. You can try out the uh, everything in this package is available today at next.build21 package name. And here in the body tag, you know, very boilerplate code, uh, except that I added three new things that are coming from Microsoft Graph Toolkit. 
The first one is Microsoft Graph Toolkit MSAL2 provider, where kind of similarly, you need to register your application with Azure Active Directory and get your client ID here. So Pat, is there anything different for registering Azure Active Directory? That's a good question. Um, the difference between MSL2 provider and the first provider that you already used from Microsoft Graph Toolkit is you'd have to enable your application to register with a single app um, registration or a single, single page app uh, application in Azure Active Directory. And that will enable you to use the brand new MSL2 provider from there. And then on the page, we also have two components. The uh, MGT login components is one of our you know, most popular ones as part of uh, the package. And then the other one is the new MGT file list that, that we're introducing as part of the preview. So on the left side, I have uh, a website um, you know, that's running. Uh, if you can see right here on the right bottom corner, the live server is running as uh, hosting this web page. And I go to localhost 5500, which matches the port number. And I can now log in to my Microsoft account. Uh, I have two accounts signed in with the browser. I'm going to select the first one. And you can see here is one of my accounts uh, with the details. And you can see all the files pulling from my uh, OneDrive. And I'm also going to try and sign in with a different account, the MS Graph demo account. Sign in here. A whole different profile picture and a whole different uh, list of files. And you can click on the login button in order to switch between two different um, accounts that you would have, or more than two accounts that you would have, utilizing the new provider that we're offering. Now you can imagine scenarios such as um, I could, in combination with the other existing Microsoft Graph Toolkit components, I could try to send files together with a message to some Teams channel that I belong to. I'm going to select the monthly report and then say, hey, guys. Check out this new report. And I will attach file. This is going to trigger the file list. And I can select the file that I wanted to attach, sending it to the Teams channel. And in the Teams channel, you will be able to select the teams that you were just uh, sending it to as part of the, I think, sales and marketing mo monthly report. And ta-da, here it is. Awesome. Okay. Uh, that's our demo for Microsoft Graph Toolkit and how to add the connected um, file list from your OneDrive and uh, adding multiple users as part of the login. And then I'm going to send it back to Aicha, who is going to show you a little bit more on regional vacations. Awesome. Thank you, Pat. Hey, everyone. In this session, we will discuss about rich notifications in Microsoft Graph. So let's get into it. Microsoft Graph change notifications enable your applications to be notified when there is a change in the Microsoft 365 data. By subscribing to notifications for a specific resource, such as users' emails, OneDrive files, or Teams messages, your app can retrieve notifications when there is a change in the service. Does the notification show these changes? Not exactly. The notification object does not contain any resource data. So in a basic notification, we can't see what's happening in the notification. Your app needs to call an additional get API in Graph to discover details of the object to see the changes. This makes the app code complex and does not scale well. So the notification doesn't really carry the resource data. Um, is there any way to get this other than making another Graph call? That's a great question. That's what we're going to discuss today. Yes, recent notifications carry the resource payload. That means your app receives the notification with the resource data, so we can get the details of the changes with single step. Today, we're announcing that Exchange workload, including Outlook emails, calendar events, contacts, will be supporting rich notifications in Microsoft Graph Beta. Awesome. Do we have any examples today on how do we use rich notifications in real world scenarios? Yes, just basic examples would be email scanning or calendar uh, email scanning or calendar syncing are great examples for rich notifications. Think of your app that receives data for the entire tenant in near real time to perform security analysis or getting up to date view of org wide events. You can build all these scenarios with one single subscription to Microsoft Graph API for Outlook. So by using rich notifications, you can 
write simpler, faster, more scalable code because it delivers all details about the resource data with one single subscription. Also, you can create more streamlined and up-to-date product scenarios. Let's see how it works with a demo. Great, let's see it. Right, so I built an app and uh, it just receives the rich notifications from the webhook. Basically, what I'm doing here is a post request whenever I create a subscription. And then I also receive the notification when there's a change. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this app. After this point, I just need to create a subscription. So my app is running in localhost 5000. Let's create a subscription. For this example, I'm using Postman Graph Collection. So here, as you see, we have a post request for Microsoft Graph Beta subscriptions. Here, if you quickly take a look in body, you will see the change tab created, updated, deleted. Notification URL will be my webhook. So I'm tunneling localhost 5000 with ngrok, and here is my ngrok URI slash API slash notifications will be in my notification URL. Resource will be my me messages. That means I'm tracking Outlook emails. Whenever there is a change in Outlook emails, my app should track this. Let's create an in email case, and test this notification then. Not yet. Let's create the subscription first, and then we can create the Outlook email and see the changes. There you go. So Love it. now, before we jump into that part, we're going to include the resource data because Outlook um, uh, Exchange workload um, allows us to include resource data with rich notifications, and I'm going to need the encryption certificate. Let's quickly go ahead and run this um, post, and then we will create our subscription. I will click send. Now that our subscription is created, Let's go ahead and check out our app. Yes, there we go. We received a token for our subscription. That means our subscription is created. Now let's create so it. Back, you know. <laughs> now we can create the Outlook um, events. Sorry, Outlook messages. So what I'm going to do is, for this example, I will use Postman Graph Collections, but you can also use Outlook uh, apps to create a basic email. So. On the left side, I'm going to search send email. Yes, so here it's a basic email uh, message. I just have the subject, importance, body, uh, everything about the basic email. When I send this one, this will generate something in Outlook um, mailbox. OK, we sent this successfully. Let's go ahead and check our app. Here we go. Now, in the um, data part, we get the change notifications, which is a rich notification in this case, because other than the normal change notifications, this one carries the data. But in this case, our data is encrypted. Do we also need to decrypt the data then? Correct. So for this one, uh, I'm going to use my decryption app, and then uh, I already copied data in the data key in my decryption app. I will just copy the data signature, and then we should be able to see the real data in the change notifications. All right, so in this case, since uh, Exchange Workload allows us to use rich notification, we now decrypt it, and now we can see body preview, email address, subject, everything about this changes in Outlook. This is really awesome, and this is just one example of using rich notifications in a scenario. Cool. So uh, right. what are the other scenarios that we're talking about? Great question, Beth. So let's take a look at another way of getting change notifications delivered. All right. So in this case, uh, we saw in the demo that webhooks is the one way of carrying the notification. Change notifications can be delivered in different ways to subscribers. If the main delivery mode for change notifications is through webhooks, it can be challenging to take advantage of webhooks for high throughput scenarios or when the receiver cannot expose a publicly available notification URL. 
To handle such scenarios, you can use Azure Event Hubs, which is a popular real-time event ingestion and distribution service built for scale. Azure Event Hubs can handle thousands of events per second, and it's a great alternative for traditional webhooks to receive change notifications. It's really great to see all these, you know, uh, combinations of Azure services come to the rescue with Microsoft Graph services all together as a combination. Um, so how do I get started with this? Great question, Beth. With uh, Azure Event Hubs, we can handle scenarios where applications subscribing to a large set of resources, also applications subscribing to resources with the high frequency changes, at the same time, we can handle multi-tenant applications that subscribe to resources across a large set of organizations. By using Azure Event Hubs to receive change notifications, you will not rely on publicly exposed notification URLs. Azure Event Hubs SDK will transfer the notifications to your application. Also, you will not need to reply to notification URL validation. You can just ignore the validation message that we receive. Let's see it. Okay, so to get started, First of all, Event Hub is available for all resources that support Microsoft Graph change notifications. To start using this notification delivery mode in your application, you will need to complete two steps. First, of course, you need to provision Azure Event Hubs. Second, you need to provision Azure Key Vault in order to access Event Hub securely. Microsoft Graph gets Event Hub connection string through Azure Key Vault. Let's take a look how we can set up Azure Event Hubs and configure Microsoft Graph change notifications. Awesome. OK, so I prepared another demo for us. In this case, we are in the Azure portal, and I created my Azure Event Hubs and the Key Vault already. Let's go ahead and check what's happening in the Event Hubs. Here, we have a huge graphic showing us what is received by Event Hubs. And to get these changes, we first need to create event hub under event hubs. Here is the one I created, and I copy the connection string of that one under event key vault. So here is my key vault, and I'm keeping my connection string in this key vault. Do you, we need to uh, connect our app with the key vault somehow and configure event hub connection strings? So uh, what do That's I do correct. to start that? Yes, that, that's a great question, Beth. So uh, since our connection string is staying under this key vault, as a notification URL, we need to connect to the key vault to get the connection string. To do that, we need vault URL. And then since my connection string is staying as a secret, I need my secret name. Next is just exactly what we did in the previous demo. We just need to create a subscription and then we, we, our event hub uh, will start tracking the changes in Outlook. OK, so for this demo, I'm going to use Graph Explorer here. I logged in as Aichabash, and I have the right permissions. Now I'm going to create a post request using version 1, and my query will be subscriptions. Let's take a look at the body. I have resource for this time. It's tracking Outlook calendar events. Now the notification URL will be event hubs, and now we need our key vault URL. So also to get the connection string, we need the secret name. And the last thing we need is the tenant ID. After we build the notification URL, we just need the change type, create it, update it, delete it. And I will just go ahead and run the query and create the subscription, then see what happens. All right, so our subscription is created. Is the event hub listening yeah. now? Yes, um, let's go ahead and check. Now that our event hub is listening, um, Whenever we create something in the Outlook calendar, we should be able to see the changes. To see the change um, changes in a data format, I'm using Visual Studio Code Event Hub Explorer so that we can see the notification in data. Cool. Are we going to create a calendar event to see these changes? 
Yes, yeah, so let's go ahead and create a calendar event to see changes in the graphic and the data as well. Awesome. I logged in as Miriam in this Outlook calendar. Now I will create one on one meeting between Aicha and Miriam. I'll invite Aicha. OK, I will send this. Let's get back to Event Hub. Yeah, there we go. Yay. We see the changes in the graphic. So in a data format, we can see the changes by using Event Hub Explorer in Visual Studio Code. Yeah, super so, cool. How do we exactly. uh, use Our, data in a real world scenario then? That's a great question, but to use these uh, features in a real life scenario, I prepared another demo for you. So basically, we are tracking changes right now, as you see in the graphic. I created a logic app to use these changes and create actions about it. Let's go ahead and check our logic app designer. Here, whenever there's a change in the event hub, I'm getting the changes in JSON and I parse the JSON. After that, I create two actions. First, I notify the attendees with a Teams Flowbot as a new event is scheduled by this person. And I create another notification for the organizer to send a notification as you created event successfully. OK, now I will create another event and see if our logic app works. I will in my iChat again. And Lots let's of one -on between get the two. and run the logic app. OK, so our logic app runs successfully. We have the conditions successful. Let's go to Teams for iChat first and check out if we get anything from the Flowbot. We have the notification. And Flowbot sent us calendar event notification created by Miriam. Let's go ahead and check Teams for Miriam. She's the organizer. So for this case, I'm logged in as Miriam. And the notification received successful event is successfully created. So this is again another way of um, using change notifications with the configuration of Azure Event Hubs. Basically, what we did in this demo is we created a subscription by using Event Hub connection string through Azure Key Vault. Then Event Hub started listening change notifications. Finally, our app received Microsoft Graph change notifications through Event Hub. That's all we did. Cool. Hopefully, uh, our viewers learn some new ways to utilize these tools and uh, Microsoft Graph data in order to build more apps uh, that's connected to Microsoft Graph. And let's go look at some of the resources that we talked about today. So call to action. We have um, some new NPM packages for you to install if you would like to utilize the new Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Uh, make sure that you install at Microsoft slash MGT at next.built21. And you can also check out the Get Started Guides. And there are uh, all kinds of articles to get you started on different platforms and uh, web technologies. We also have three different learning paths for you. Um, you can learn about develop apps with the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, Microsoft Graph Fundamentals, and explore Microsoft Graph scenarios. And those are the respective links underneath those titles. Uh, make sure you also check out what Aicha talked about today, Microsoft Graph change notifications through Azure Event Hubs through the link provided on your screen. Over to Aicha. All right. Thanks for join uh, joining us in this session. Check out other Microsoft Graph sessions at Microsoft Fields. Right. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.